Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs? This is the T-67. It's the Tier 5 American turreted tank destroyer. It's located on the northeast spawn of Province and it's under the command of Sly Meerkat. Yes, he's in action again. You saw all those replays on the T-67, including the two Radley Waters games that he managed to send in. Uh, and those were consecutive games. And he sent another one in. Game starts. Now you can still see two marks of excellence on the barrel. I believe he's actually working on his third mark as we uh, watch this game. He's uh, known for being very, very industrious with his uh, games. He often plays with the uh, meerkats fighting for position on his lap. Okay, well he's managed to get to a, a really good bush to spot the enemies. Found an AMX that you'll see. Not sure if he's going to get spotted though. Well, he fires around in. Did he get spotted? Yes, he did. Yeah, and a Biz 44-1. He's being a bit of a... Well, he's taking that position instead. Oh, no, it looks like he managed to get some serious damage on the enemy tank over there. Or did he? No, he didn't, actually, because that uh, Striv is not showing any damage whatsoever. Okay, Sly's gone into the bush. He spotted a Viz 44-1 again. Is that the same one? Maybe a different one. But over there, we've got a DSPZ and a Leo. You can see that this thing fires very, very quickly indeed. The standard fire rate is 3.07. Sly's got it down to 2.44. Normally, it's got fairly poor dispersion, but you notice here it's getting excellent shots. So he must have a brilliant crew. That Skoda T24 is out of the game. Now I think those other two houses are uh, two tanks are behind the houses, but he's now going for the M10, and he could get a kill shot here as well. Oh no, critical damage! No, I think he hit the track. Oh, we tracked him, and then he killed him with the next two shots. Okay, that's a KB2. He didn't get the kill shot on that one, but he did get the spotting, and quite a lot of spotting at that. Now some enemy tanks did make it up onto our side of the map. There's still a whole bunch of them over the other side, and it appears that they weren't really paying attention to his shots coming in from this bush. Or at least not as much as they should have been. So, two kills under his belt already. Who's next? He's just chilling for a second, holding down his right hand mouse button. Oh, Tiger P! Now, he does need premium ammo, and he is, has actually loaded loads of premium. And in fact, you do need it in this tank destroyer if you are going for a third mark. Main reason for that is that, uh, obviously, every now and then you're going to get a game where you're up against tier 6. But occasionally, you will get a tier 7 game. This is a tier 7. He's tier 5. So he needs that extra bit of penetration in order to get it through the hulls of those vehicles. Standard penetration with this round is 128 millimeters, does 115 alpha. With the premium rounds, it goes through 177 millimeters for the same alpha. Yeah, the Tiger P's backing up, but he's still behind the house, so I think he's going to have to get closer if he wants to get some more damage. There are some enemy tanks over this side, but I'm not so sure he's actually going to do anything about it just yet. The Tiger P is in sight. There is an outline. He's just went up against the wall there. But it's very, very faint. And it's just a pixel at the top of the vehicle. Maybe just the Capola. Now, there is an arty in this game. It's a gorilla. And he up, he might be down in the bottom. That's I think that's why he actually poked over the edge. Just to see if the gorilla had actually gone down into the middle, into the valley. Sometimes they do do that, and in fact, actually, it's quite a good tactics. Oh, no, we found out where he is. We know exactly where he is now. He's in grid square J1. Just saw the, the round come out from there. Trying to get the tiger. Oh, missed it there. He might get another chance. No, not from this position. I think he's too low. Capone only. Is he going to take the risk? Well, he certainly got the spotting anyway, even if he didn't actually take a shot himself. But 
the thing about this tank destroyer is it's got virtually no armor. In fact, the toughest armor on the vehicle is the front of the turret, which is 25.4 millimeters, whereas everything else on the vehicle is only 12.7, and that's only enough to stop a machine gun bullet, nothing else. Anything else that hits the vehicle, so long as it, um, if it hits the tracks, it might be stopped, but <laughs> it won't stop anything on the actual metal itself. The case, it's, uh, it's thinner, you might say, than a Wolverine. Well, I'd say thinner than the Wolverine. I think Wolverine actually has the same thinness of armor. I think the tank destroyer branch were actually trying to get speed rather than anything else off their vehicles. And that's why they really didn't put any armor on them. Plus, of course, it wasn't just the speed. It was also the fact that uh, they... Oh, well, he has been spotted. They wanted to, uh, they didn't think that the armor would actually be very effective, and yes, he is attracting fire, so he's gone nice up against Cliff Edge, and he's now firing at T-67. Oh, one shot! Brilliant! Now, he's going to have a little more difficulty with the AT-8. I think he actually went down into the cap area, but he didn't expect to get spotted, and I think it was the T-67 who saw him, because he's got a 340-meter view range. And now he's being spotted from the other side of the map. But that guy just died. So now it's just the AT-8, an IS, and the Gorilla. And I think he wants to take care of the AT-8 and the IS first. And he might be able to shoot in through the rear of the AT-8. Yes, he does. But the guy's turning to face him. So he needs to race past this guy and get behind him. Don't let the pointy end point at you. Yep, you're going to have to go around the long way. Puts another one in. One more shot. Oh, he fires through the gap. That was almost as cheeky as uh, King Eric firing the football between all his uh, teammates and players and taking out the, uh, the FA Cup final. Oh, you can tell I'm a Manchester United supporter. Eric Cantona fired a, a shot right between all of his players who are moving about backwards and forwards and managed to get the kill shot the well the kill shot the win oh he rams the gorilla to death that was from an FA Cup final quite some time ago excellent win there by Sly Meerkat here's the end of battle results and that was another ace tanker win for Sly Meerkat in the T67 this time around he got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, he got eight, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, and a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, one short of getting a top gun, and also one third of the enemy team. He also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. On top of all that, he got a patrol duty. Yes, he was the only one spotting at least six enemy tanks whilst they were damaged in that game and got himself a medal for it. Let's have a look at Team Scott. Well, we can see from this battle that he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the Viz 44 one who got 2,277 hit points, while Slime managed to get 2,026. The third highest damage in the game was the Viz 44-1. There are a lot of them in the game at the moment. 1,923 hit points went to him. When it came to kills, though, he definitely had the highest number. He got five kills. Three kills went to the Skoda T25. Two kills went to the Panzerkampfwagen Vier Ausrung H. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the highest in that one. He's the only player to get over 1,000 with 1,318 base experience points. 758 went to the Skoda T25 and 755 went to the P43 Tur or Peter. He fired 27 rounds in this game, much less than he normally does. 22 direct hits and 18 penetrations. Damage of 2,026 hit points, of which 969 were at more than 300 meters. Two hits received, both penetrations. The I'm afraid both of them actually came, if I remember correctly, came from that T-67 on the enemy team who was uh, uh, spotted him coming into the cap area and thought, oh, I'll have a piece for him. And seven enemy vehicles spotted, seven enemy vehicles damaged, five killed, 1,769 hit points of spotting assist. I think that's what gave him the ace tanker and such a high base XP, having all that assistance. 
31,542 credits, 14,194 for battle payments, 61,507 credits altogether. And after repair and ammunition resupply, and even though he actually did fire a lot of premium ammo, he only made a small loss of 16,315 credits. 1,318 XP and 1,977 experience points altogether. The reason actually he got a high XP in this game was mainly down to the fact that he was taking on higher tier opponents than himself. Yes, it was a tier 7 game, so every time you hit a higher tier opponent, you get 10% more XP than you would normally uh, because it's a, a higher tier opponent. And if it's two tiers higher, then it's even more XP on top of that. So... Yes, it really does help sometimes if you're bottom tier and you're in a vehicle that's capable of doing quite a lot of damage. So an excellent game by Sly. Uh, he's still working on the T67, so I'm expecting more games from him very shortly. And do stick around because I do have another replay uh, that you might want to see. It's coming up um, in, in the next slot. So uh, yeah, do watch that one. You won't want to miss it. If you enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. What are you doing? Hi, you see yourself? Oh! Oh! And thank you for watching.